All right, cool. So starting it off on raid. <clears throat> Can you uh, tell me uh, ideally what your what you think is the best break off to get to P1 for uh, both sides? We'll start with red. Um, to be honest, to get to P1, I normally go through through the stairs by laundry. Okay, so through the stairs at laundry over here. Yeah, so basically, I'll I'll like um, how do you say that? Shit? Slide off the the stairs and hit to the to the mid. Nice. So you so you are hitting that uh, G slide, right? That's, yeah. All right. Good. All right. Cool. And you're probably ending up right here, right? Yep. And uh, I'm assuming you would probably expect your AR player to be top laundry. Yes. Cool. And uh, what are these so, other two players doing? So basically, I would expect one to be watching the middle. Okay, one watching the middle. And the second one. Wait, this is for for control, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Just for hard points. So these are the hard points. Hard point one, two, three, uh, four, and five. To be honest, the second one is either like he'd be watching a sp spawn to make sure they don't take it, or I honestly don't know after that. Okay, so cool. So you have three players and you're missing this last player, right? Um, usually this last player is your flex player, and he's the one who's either going with uh, the 3-1 hit, or he's just going 2-2. Uh, two, two. Um, okay. Very naturally, uh, a lot of teams try to take middle because they think middle, uh, you know, gives them a majority of the control, which is true to some point. So you are completely right about this first player getting to the hill. The second player is either, you know, pre-aiming top laundry or pre-aiming from the stairs. This player, he is definitely pre-aiming this, um, he's definitely pre-aiming Z right now. While this player, his ultimate goal is to end up right here. Okay. And the reason why his ultimate goal is to end up right here is because now you're given a setup where you can play defense if you wanted to. And what's happening okay. is this AR player is he's calling out, oh, guy on the left side or, oh, guy on the right side. And this one AR player is obviously trying to get some bullets down if he can. And when he calls out guy on the left, boom, number two kills him. Oh, guy on the right. Boom, number one kills him. And that's how you would kill him. Okay, he's a call out guy then. He's like the Overwatch. Yeah, exactly. Um obviously he has an AR so he's still like shooting. He's probably in a gunfight against one of these guys at art or something. Uh probably that's my man the, probably the dude that's like in window most of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um this third player right here, he's holding middle. Now there's a different setup you can do. And this is what a lot of pros are starting to do now, and that's where they take this flex player, and instead they're making him be a third player for hill control, while this player is just trying to hold middle the entire time. Um, okay. Yeah, so the way this would be is if this flex player is holding an AR, he would just set up here with an AR. But if he was using a sub, then instead he would uh, be pushed up with uh, the player on site. All right, cool. So now this is the uh, second setup, or sorry, the second break off you can have for P1. And it's the exact same thing, where these two players are playing inside hill. This guy's looking over. Hey, guys, you guys got one on your left, one on your right. And you guys could, like, just say, all right, let's double up this guy on the right. Boom, you get the kill. You get to the head glitch. You, get, you kill this guy on the left. Um, I know you play league play, so <laughs> comms probably are never there. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's, do you still try your hardest and, you know, still call out in game even though people aren't talking to you? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. It all depends because sometimes there'll be people that just are ignorant. So that's when I'm just like, I right, we're just going to play like that. Yo, facts. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. And um, I'm glad you don't let those people get to you. Just ignore them. Um, if you do get good teammates, perfect. Have you ever decided trying playing out, uh, playing eights or anything? I can never find um, anyone that's doing it. Yeah, and it that's where I said, you know, the COD community is just very divided. And um, people just don't want other people below them to know about the game. Um, I'll tell you right now, everything I'm learning right now, pretty much... You follow the Challenger scene, right, 2K? Yep. 
Yep. Yeah, so I'll tell you right now, everything I'm telling you, uh, pretty much only T32 and up know. And they just don't want anyone else below them knowing, so not sure why, but here we are, continuing. Uh, but cool, we have our break off, perfect. You know, like I said, if you're playing in hill with your teammate, you should try to call out, all right, let's kill this guy on the right, or let's kill this guy on the left, and you guys are holding hands. Holding hands, holding hands, holding hands. This player, Kitchen, like I said, his ultimate goal is just holding middle, and that's that. But now we're going to switch over to the blue side. What would you What would you say is the perfect breakoff for blue? I will say I normally go into the, like, up the stairs from the little house and then go through the door. Go through the door. And are you, yeah. getting, are you getting to hill or are you sitting here? I will, I will try to get. It depends if I'm, if I'm on SMG. Uh -huh. I will go to the hill. If I'm on AR, I will either re-aim to the stairs. Perfect. Or also if I was a SMG, I will either run to the top of the hill. Well, where statue's at. Or I will go all the way left and try to flank whoever's by the window on laundry. Nice. I, I like that play uh, of you saying you're trying to flank around on the left side. Um, that could very well be done if executed correctly. And the way you'd want to execute that is obviously you have one or two AR players right here just gunning this guy at laundry. So it gives you an opportunity to flank around and uh, potentially pick up these players. Um, and then from playing League Pals, notice that a lot of people on the other side, they like to get to the black band before anybody else does. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, you're talking about when you're blue, right? You're trying to get to the black van to get pressure? No, no. I'm talking about the red team. There's a lot of people that normally when I play against, they try to get to the black van. Right. So they'll have a setup like this, right? Where it's like one player in Hill watching his left, one player um, laundry, and then one player on the bottom right, right? On, on black van? Exactly. Yeah. And then how, how I look at it, it's like I would expect like player four to care, take care of the dude that's number one. And then I will go for two and maybe get four if it's possible. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's perfect. Because I'll tell you right now, if league play is constantly set up like this, you can take full lead and freaking just flip spawns by yourself right here. Um, if you had a teammate, it would be so much easier. Because, like, again, like I said, look, this is where you guys are holding hands. And this is phase versus optic basically <laughs> where optic is you know split up right here while phase they're just holding hands holding hands and they're trying to break so if you're able to hold hands you kill this guy perfect and you get pushed up you get inside of laundry perfect and now this is where you start spawning them out behind you so i like that play of you constantly trying to hit up that left side if you can bring a teammate with you while your other ar players are shooting if not, it's all good. You could uh, just do a regular, you know, default, just play your life in hill and uh, play for the kills. Okay. Um, if you do have another AR player, though, uh, coming with you up these steps and he's looking these stairs, you as a sub player, you can always get a cheeky play where you hop up, get to pillars, and then you can kill this guy kitchen right away. I, I normally do that, but like SMG, I mean, SMD, I do it, search and destroy. Oh yeah, okay, well, I'll tell you right now, it's it's even more effective in Hardpoint, because the second you kill this guy Kitchen, this guy Kitchen should not expect this, by the way. Um, so when he dies, he's either going to spawn out, or he's going to spawn close, and here's the best part. Now you have so much control for a pinch, and this is where you're setting your team up for a 3-1 hit. Okay. And if you're setting your team up for a 3-1 hit to break spawns right here, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have maybe one or two people super focused on you, and you just need to wait. You just need to play your life and wait because your teammates are in a 3v2. They're going to get these kills, and once they get these kills, they're spawning out. And then your teammates are pushing up, and then this is where you can pinch. Okay. So this is how um, you, as a professional player, need to understand what play you made and understand that you did your job. And your job is, you know, killing this guy. You just made too many people look behind you, looking for you. So you did your job. You just can't die now. Because guess what? If you die, then you just pretty much made it irrelevant the entire time. 
Does that make sense how you uh, how you make it irrelevant if you die back here? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So basically, because when the second group pushes up, they basically, it's a good chance that they might die as well then. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it is, is if they try to push up, you're sitting in a good corner, they're going to die. Or if they just say, screw it, I'm just going to keep holding it, your teammates are going to be pushing up, killing them from behind. Awesome. And uh, very quickly, just like that, that's how you uh, hold the P1, uh, and that's how you break it. Now, um, a more aggressive playstyle, right? So let's say you just broke the enemy, and now they're all spawning out Garage. And now this is where you get your setup going, right? This is where I'm talking about you want to play it like football, almost where you're just pushed up the map, you're keeping them in their end zone, and you're keeping them away from your end zone. So, um, the way you want to do that is you want to get aggressive. You definitely want to get aggressive. You want a player on this head glitch right now watching that. You want a player over here out middle pushed up just waiting for them to fly out. Like, this is a great corner just to lay down in and just watch them fly out. And then your other player can uh, just help out your teammate on time. While this player is hard blocking okay and since this player is hard blocking um i'll tell you right now if you're sitting window you're kind of screwing over your team you need to back up more to like this portion right here and then this is where you would call out guys i have your um, entire right side and they can just focus their left you're hard blocking you got your teammates pushed up boom 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 and your ultimate goal on why you're pushing up is because you don't want the enemy to ever get a four-man hit. You always want them scattered. And the second you can start getting uh, the enemy scattered is the second you start just winning the game for your team. Um, in league play, I'll tell you... So actually, let me just ask you this question. In league play, are your teammates playing a lot more on stacking time and just playing time and spawns or are they just constantly like flying out and just going for kills not nah, a kill horn most of the time kill horn most of the time all right cool um with that that might mean you're forced to play like an ar role where you have to constantly hard block but if you do run into a game where your players are very slow and they're ars i'll tell you right now you can individually win a hard point game as long as you rotate get your spawns for your teams they stack in hill and you just stay pushed out the entire time and you're doing the three one like i said um where you're pushed out and you're just keeping them super staggered where if you're pushed out all the way out here you get one two kills two of these players are spawning over here two of these players are spawning over here they have a horrible hit right now um but Awesome. So uh, we just concluded on that for P1 and, you know, staying pushed out, being aggressive, making sure we're hard blocking. And I would say um, at the 30 second mark, if you guys aren't getting too much action, this player can just come right over here and uh, start hard, hard blocking and also picking up the missing lane. Okay. Um, almost no one ever goes poolside and it's because they shouldn't, right? Um, they shouldn't go poolside until P2 pops. So normally around like the 25 second mark, if you're back here, you want to just, you know, throw a shoulder and make sure no one's coming pool. Usually no one does, um, so you will be fine. But that's that. All right. But let's say um, now we're set up for P2, right? We got a clean rotation for P2. Perfect. Uh, can you tell me what your ideal setup for P2 is? Um. Normally, I will say I normally would split. Basically, wait, you talk about defense side or offense? So we're uh, we have we have good spawns for P two hard point right now. Okay, well, but are we the blue right now with the red right yeah. now. Oh, sorry, yeah, we are the blue. I so basically, I will have one watching the window. Okay. Um, one watching like this window right here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. No, well, not not like like inside, but like making sure nobody goes from that side. So he'll probably be camped up by um. What do you call that shit? 
What do you call that shit? I forgot. Well, inside the kitchen, basically. He'd be camped on the right side of the kitchen. Oh, okay. So he's, like, sitting right here, and he's uh, watching the window. Yeah, basically. Okay. All right, then, then I have one watching the back, so he'll probably be, like, by by the little head glitch in our spawn. Yeah. Well, right is that there. where he's at, basically? Yeah, exactly. All right. One would be uh, behind... Let me call it, I guess, the pillar in the middle, I guess you could call it. Yeah, perfect. One behind the pillar right there, number two. Yep. And then number four, to be honest, he'll probably be helping number two out. No, helping number two out. Okay, cool. So what you have right here is a tight setup. And if you pay attention to the CDL and you hear the comms, a lot of the times you're hearing two things, either guys spread out or tighten up. And the reason why they're calling that is because they're estimating the timing of the enemy team. So let's say uh, we just rotated to P2, but the enemies are very close, right? We know that they're close. This is where you would call out, guys, guys, play tight, play tight. And it's because it could be exactly something like this, where you have to play tight, and the enemies are so close, you just got to get ready for these trades, right? So this setup is not bad at all. Um, you're getting everything checked. A uh, little worried if these guys just don't peek and they go all the way around basketball. Usually teams don't do that. Uh, it just takes too much time. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a perfect tight setup. And if you guys die, you're just spawning right here. Now, um, let's say we do kill the enemies, though. Let's say we kill all four of them. Do you know where they will spawn? Um, Shouldn't they spawn with like, the backside of um, P1? You're exactly correct. They are 100% spawning right here. And uh, if you ever, by accident, you know, like pushed out pillars or something, then they would instead just spawn over here. Okay. Yeah, just letting you know if you pushed out pillars. But ideally, you do want to keep them right here. Um, the reason why you want to keep them right here is because when they do decide to rotate to P3, they can't get to that main spawn, and the main spawn is AC. We'll talk about that later. Let's finish up on P2, though. Okay. So let's say we just got done playing tight, and we killed all four of them this is again where you want to play it like football so you would first off have one player push out by the way this player uh is anchoring the entire time this is just the hard block spot you just sit here it's okay don't <laughs> it's just the greatest spot in the game for p2 <laughs> um but let's say we just killed all four of them the first thing you want to do and this is more than likely going to be you is you just want to fly out of money Come all the way around and lay on steps. And the reason why you lay on steps is because eventually these guys are going to spawn up and they're going to get ready for a hit. And all four of them, I guarantee you, all four of them are going to try to hit the front of hill. And right here, you just got to time it. Boop, turn around, boom, you get a four piece. Easy as that, every single time. Um, if you want to make sure that you are guaranteed the four piece, then you would wait for your teammates and hill to start shooting once they start shooting that's when then you peek and uh, you kill all of them from behind okay now this is a very important role and you have to make sure you practice this and get this timing down for raid on p2 but when you push out of money and you get to these steps you just gotta wait for those gunfights and once those gunfights start you try to come up and peek, and someone's staring at you, boom, you get one shot, you cannot die. If you die right here on these steps, you're going to um, screw up. Your, you're not going to screw up anything that much. It's just you're going to not be rotated for P3. Like, if you okay. die right here, you might as well just say, guys, we can't break P3. And that's, that's usually how it is. Um, okay. But let's say you're one shot right here, and you're laying down. What's the first thing you think you should do? Back up. Yes, back up. And where should you go? I will say I will probably go up to the window, the bedroom. Bedroom? Okay, cool. So you're so you're so you're almost there. You're almost there. Um great idea. So you you know pushed out, came around, you see four players, you get one shot. The first thing you should do is just go to new. Okay. The reason why you're gonna go to new is because look what happens, right? Uh, a bunch of gunfights are going to go down, and two things are going to happen. If your teammates die, 
they're all spawning out here, and the enemy is spawning out here. So now you're rotated for P P three. Okay. But let's say you um, let's say your teammates are just dons at the game, and they're gods, right? So they actually the two v four them inside of hill. The enemy are all spawning here again, right? Okay. But if you remembered, you started backing up and rotating, 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 rotating. Your teammates all kill all four of them. These guys are going to say, guys, let's just rotate. Boom. You're already set up right here for a cut. You could sit right here um, in this corner, wait for them to fly through. You get those kills. You can hop on top of Van and watch inside of Jim and get those kills. Or you can grab a gym corner. And this is the greatest play you can do as an individual player. Because you literally went from killing them all middle to rotating and guaranteeing P3 spawns and P3 hill. Okay. Because now um, when they start rotating, they should be rotating at like 25 seconds. That's, that's normal. So your teammate should be rotating as well. And you sitting in this corner, even if all four of them come right here, you're going to get at least one or two kills. And that one or two kills is spawning the enemy all the way out here. Okay. And your teammates are now spawning right here at Mansion. Okay. So now what happens is you're going to spawn up as well. And now you guys are in a 4v2 for P3. While the enemy is spawned out all the way over here at P2. And uh, that's uh, that's how you always execute a perfect P3 rotation. Um, I'm assuming you probably had a question about breaking P2, right? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, awesome, yeah. It, it's just that was very important to talk about that play for the rotation because pretty much this is how you um, link, uh, chain link uh, hard points. Have you ever chain linked hard points in uh, league play? Nope. All right, well, uh, this is how you do it. It's just based off of playing the rotations perfectly, and that's the chain link, is you guys rotate to P2. This one player playing out here, he's chain linking and getting you guys P3, and then I'll tell you again another one to chain link to P4, and you can guarantee yourself 180 seconds if you just play it correctly. Okay. Um, but now we got to break P2. So uh, normally all four of your teammates are going to be spawning raid right here, and this is where you need to call out, guys, are we doing a 2-1, or sorry, are we guys, are we doing a four-man hit, or are we doing a 2-2, or a 3-1? I'll tell you right now, um, you almost never want to go laundry side just because this player is very um, dominant uh, with his play style. And not only that, but if you guys take too long back here, you just screwed over your entire team. So, like, let's say there's 50 seconds left, and you guys are taking so much time, and you finally kill this guy at 30 seconds. Guess what? It's 30 seconds. They have P3 now. Okay. Yeah, so ideally, you don't want to go towards laundry side, and instead, you want to all four try to hit out middle and get a 2-2 two -two hit where two people are going pool and two people are hitting the front. And uh, that's just the basic break, is just all four go middle, Two people go around pool, two people front, and now you just play the gunfights. If you ever try to four-man hit and try to four-man break, this is where it comes down to um, team play. And you're not going to have this in league play, which really sucks. So it might just be a simple everyone flies in, everyone dies. But if you're a part of a team, the way you play this four-man hit is you have your player calling out the trophy systems. And you guys are just trying to destroy those trophy systems. If you guys can't, that's totally fine. The next thing you guys do is you do um, number trades. So you have your main sub going first, second sub, your flex player, and then your main AR player. And uh, you just call it out. Guys, I'm hitting left. Uh, watch my right. Cool. I'll uh, fly in and I'll pick up your laundry. So it'll be something like this. Uh, let me get these blue dots out of here. So it'd be something like your main sub is saying, guys, I'm going to fly and bunny hop over here to this left corner and pass money. The other sub player says he's going to, you know, slide in toward this pillar and you want to slide in and hold that money. 
and the last anchor player usually holds that pinch for a number four. Okay. Um, it gets really it gets really crazy and in depth like that when you're on a pro team. We're not on a pro team though, so um, it usually doesn't get that crazy. All right, but you know now uh, player number four just executed a play a uh, perfect rotation, and now team blue is ready to set up for P three, and team red has to break it. So. <clears throat> What is your perfect setup for P3? And this is going to be very hard for you to answer because it's even hard for me to answer. Um, can you tell me what the perfect P3 setup is? Um, I normally go from, um, what do you call it? From the beach and hit them from the back. Uh, from the, uh, from like uh, over here or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I normally oh, go all okay. around. Oh, so so you're saying you got a player set up in here, right? And then, okay, cool. So ideally, then right here, you should be doing a three-one setup, or sorry, uh, the three-one rule. And uh, can you tell me where these other players will be? Um, to be honest, they probably be exactly where they're at right now. Oh, cool. Yeah, you know like what? I, you're you're not wrong. Um, this is the ba uh, the basic setup where um this player sits in a corner in gym. And this player is just getting that info on Jim and middle while this player is just um, holding the, this entire guy's mid push. So let's just say for an example, um, it looks something like this, right? Where these guys, they're constantly looking for players to kill and they're just not finding anybody. This guy is calling out, oh shoot, two Jim, two Jim. He's probably weak. These guys fly in Jim. Number four, two pieces them. And then these guys are saying, oh, crap, we got to get that trade. So they fly in, and number three just gets those free kills. So that's the uh, usual setup on uh, what you do. And then player one is holding out this entire side. And ideally, this player one is exactly like you said. He flanks, he flanks, he flanks. I got you. Because at the same time, I would see, like, like when it hits 20 seconds, player one could go to go to P4. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it gets scary though because the second you're all the way out here, if your teammates start dying, the enemy is spawning right here. Oh shoot, what did I do? There we go. So the enemies are spawning right here, so they're constantly able to just get off multiple hits, right? Um, so if you're just sitting over here, you're kind of being a detriment to your team, and it should be either you're anchoring back here. And saying, all right, screw it. I'm going to flank. Or it's, guys, I think I'm going to try to rotate. Uh, are you guys having a lot of gunfight? Okay, I'll, I'll flank. Or it's, okay, I'll rotate. Um, this is more for a main AR player. Um, yeah, no. It, it's it's really difficult trying to see a sub player doing this play. Because you are correct. It is good to flank this. Um, it's just, you never want to lose AC spawns. AC spawns are the most important spawns. Because there's times where, you know, if all four of you, like, are over here and, like, fighting, and you killed all four of the enemy, all four of the enemies could spawn right here. Okay. You know, so that's usually why you just want to try to always make sure you have a player AC, and that's usually your AR player. And uh, your sub player is usually playing, like, right here. Um, damn it. So let, let me fix that. Let me fix that. If your AR player is just sitting and making sure he's holding down uh, AC, he has this entire place and he has middle. Therefore, you as a sub player, you're playing tight with your other teammates, or you can just be roaming around inside of red. Um, but let's say uh, we did our basic setup, right? Where it's something like this, where you know all four of them hit inside a gym, four of them hit middle, and we just team wipe them. The second we team wipe them, again, you want to play it like football where you try to push out. So the second you get those kills, number four should push out towards pillars right here. And number three should push out towards Z right here. Reason why is because now you guys are setting yourself up for a professional play. And that's spawning the enemy AC with only about 10 seconds to spare. So 
let's say uh, you guys, they four hit, we killed all four of them, there should be about maybe 45 seconds left in the game. When there's 45 seconds left in the game and you guys just hit out art, the enemy is spawning directly on top of P4 right here. So you guys have enough time to one, hop onto uh, this rock right here to look over and an enemy close to play these kills. Um, this player number four could play on either top of these rocks. Have you ever hopped on top of these rocks? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you, you, you know, you could just look down. And what's happening is these guys are panicking and they're saying, shoot, we have 40 seconds on P3. We can't rotate. So they're just pulling out their pistols and they're trying to run. They're probably two running, two running toward mansion and two are going to come open steps. You two players middle, you guys are killing them, right? Once you guys kill them, you guys are now pushing up to rotate to P4. And these guys are going to spawn out here. And now look how horrible the enemy has for this next split. Even though your teammates are in a 2v4, it's technically a 1v2, 1v2, and you guys could soak up a lot of time. Um, so let's say these guys are hitting. Uh, you guys should usually die right here um, just because, you know, they're able to win trades. You guys all die. You guys spawn out for new. And the best part is now they're spawning P3, but they're only gaining about 20 seconds of time. Okay. While you guys are on the money hill. P4 is the money hill. All right, cool. So that was the setup and that was the rotation. Once again, I'm sure you're probably wondering how do we break P3? Yep. What I'm about to tell you, um, I feel like only I know. I haven't seen any professionals do this yet and I feel very special about it. Um, and I'll show you right now. It's uh, it's pretty neat. You could also do this on Moscow, the break I'm about to show you. All right, so let's say the enemy is um, setting up. You have to do this, by the way, when P3 just pops. So P3 just popped, the enemy uh, blue team is in their setup. Excuse me. And this is how you break it. <clears throat> so. All you need is to get one player towards mansion, preferably a sub player. If it's an AR, it's fine. It doesn't matter. And all this player does is he's just playing his life in mansion. He doesn't have to over challenge, you know, get on this ledge. He doesn't have to push up right here. He could sit right here. He could sit up top anywhere he'd like. The reason why is because this one player is blocking this spawn right here. So that's one spawn blocked. Now, the rest of your team, once again, we're doing a 3-1, right? So usually all three of you guys are playing together. And guess what? You guys all three playing together, you guys are now blocking the gym and uh, the raid spawn. So all you have to do with these three players is look for one kill. Just trade one kill. You guys get one kill, boom. This guy is now spawning all the way out P2. And the reason why is because player four, he's blocking AC spawns, and these three players are blocking gym spawns. And, you know, let's say um, let's say this guy traded one of you, so boom, he died, and you died. Hold your respawn. If you don't hold your respawn, you will spawn here, and he will probably spawn AC again as an emergency spawn. But if you died and he died and you just don't respawn for, you know, three seconds, four seconds, he's going to spawn all the way out here and you're going to spawn right there. You're going to spawn right there. So, boom, you're back with your teammates for another 4v3. And uh, right there, it's just all about just winning those trades and uh, pushing up. Ideally, um, you know, that guy called out, oh, three gym, three gym. So this guy shouldn't be looking there anymore. He should be looking over here. And this is where this guy can pinch. Boom, boom, boom. They all die. They're all spawned out P2. And now you guys are getting about 40 seconds on P3. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. So that's how you break P3. And now we are at P4, the money hill. I'll tell you right now, this money hill is, yeah, difficult to break. And it's very easy to hold. 
Yeah. <laughs> cool. So usually what happens is a lot of teams, they try to get set up with a similar setup like this. Um, P4 is that hill where almost always you could set up in a football push before they even get to you. Uh, just because, like I said, you know, you're spawning out with 30 seconds left. You might as well rotate, right? Okay. So ideally, you're going to have one player on the tree watching the back. You're going to have one player on hill helping the guy in the front. And then you have a guy in um, back over here helping the guy tree. Again, you want to make sure... Actually, dang it. I think I got this wrong. It's almost better to always have a player out. Yeah, it is better to have a player out here. So we're thinking about this football-wise. You know, we're pushing up, keeping them as far away from our end zone. You have one player kitchen holding all of middle. This guy's watching the back. This guy's helping the front. And this guy has pool slide. With this setup, here's what's going to happen. Either number one is going to see three people running at him, and he needs to back out and get to P and get back to player number three. So they can play it together. Or P1 is just not going to get any information. And instead, P uh, player number four is going to see four players hitting them pool. So this player kitchen would uh, instead come money. And now you have three people holding these guys. And last but not least, let's say we don't know that they're pool and we don't know that they're middle. If it's... If you guys haven't seen someone for a good 10 seconds, you should know that the enemy's hitting the backside. And knowing okay. that the enemy's hitting the backside very easily, you have your player back tree, you have your player right here, and then your player can uh, get ready to come up to hill. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> Again, this is a money hill, so it is very difficult to break, and... This is just a matter of getting into that setup and just being ready to adapt. There's very little adaption that needs to be done, as you can see, such as the rare adaption is, oh, they're all hitting me middle, back up to player three. Oh, they're all hitting us pool, this player just goes money. Oh, they're all hitting us in the back, then it's a more drastic rotation where it's three players back and this player left pool to get onto time. All right, um, so let's say uh, we kill all these enemies right here. Um, you, you should know where they're spawning, right? Uh, they will have to be going by gem side. Uh, so actually, if we killed them right here, the enemies would be spawning mansion. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. So I, I, I should have asked this question before we even started the master class. Um, do you know that there's different spawns for every hard point? No shit <laughs> i should have uh, i should have talked about that all right so every single hard point there's new spawns and i need to tell you that really quickly after we finish these setups and breaks okay, okay. um so yeah we're gonna uh so we just got done killing all these guys in the back all four of them are spawning poolside and this is where you want to try to transition again where player gets inside tiki player uh stays middle right here player in hill um so how do we break this right or no 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 no. yeah yeah how do we break this so it's very difficult to break but it really is simple you just need pretty much a 3-1 or a four-man hit middle just to get kitchen control the second you get kitchen control it's going to be so much easier for your guys because now you guys are setting your guys self up for a 2-2 hit or a 3-1 hit or once again, another four man. Um, I'll tell you right now, that's your ultimate goal. It's just all four players getting inside kitchen so you guys can make that call. Guys, let's 2-2 two, two hit. So if we decide to do a 2-2 two, two hit, two players outside of kitchen, or sorry, two players outside of money, two players outside of back kitchen. Ideally, what happens is um, these players are gonna be shooting them first and that gives these guys an opportunity to flank around and get those kills. Okay. And uh, if we do somehow magically get the break, like I told you, dude, this this is the hardest hill to break. 
Um, if we magically somehow get a break, once we get these kills, the enemy will now start getting sp sp uh, will start spawning out mansion. And uh, now you just need to start playing tight, right? Because you guys just broke them. So now you guys are like one shot, need to reload, uh, probably don't got any trophy systems. So you guys need to play your lives, right? Very simply, if you guys get the break on P4, no matter what, if you guys get the break, stack it. Just stack it. You can either four-man stack it or three-man stack it. Doesn't matter. Just stack P4 if you had to break it. Reason why? Because sometimes this game gets buggy, and I see players spawn over here, and I see players spawn over here, and guess what? They're giving, they're given the easiest, most natural uh, split push in the game. Not sure why it happens. It just happens. So this is where it says, if you break the hill, you stack the hill, because you guys are playing it tight, and these guys are forced to run downstairs. Or these guys are forced to uh, run inside basketball, which those are almost always easy kills. <clears throat> so that's how you set up and break P4. Now we're going to talk about rotating to P5. Rotating to P5 is different. It, it depends by the team. And it depends who, what player they're relying on. Such as New York Subliners, since they really rely on an AR player, they would very quickly try to get an AR player top stairs or top rank. And the way they do that is they invest, uh, like, you know, a sub and an AR player running towards raid and a sub and AR player running towards uh, pool steps. Once you get there, then that's how you uh, can just pretty much say, all right, we don't see anyone in hill. One player gets in hill. Now we just hold the lanes, whatever. Um, me personally, I don't like doing that. I hate this rotation just because one thing I see all the time that happens is one of these little buggers gets inside P5 and now we're split and this one guy gets a two piece. Oh, And because this one guy gets a two piece on a... Uh, Three and uh three and one. Three and one spawn all the way out here, and his teammates can easily just come up and get to hill. So this is where I say it's way better just to have a majority of your players, like a three-one, where one AR player goes raid while the other three try to just rotate and get to P5. And uh, that rotation could be between uh, you know steps z or kitchen it just depends where the spawns get p5 is a middle hill and this is where spawns could either be uh back laundry pool or sorry back laundry pool jungle mansion ramp back uh back garage like there's that five spawns just for p5 it it gets really hectic so that's why i say it's way better just to triple stack get to hill and then just play it tight I always think it's just better playing it tight because now if we play it tight, we have one player inside of kitchen and this player inside of kitchen could say, guys, I have your Z. This guy um, on raid has the entire raid side. And then the other two players in hill, all they have to do is just say, all right, I'll hold this. You hold that. And ideally it's pretty much this player is watching pull steps like that. And this player is doing the exact same thing, looking at pull steps, watching that. And if you get the setup, I'll tell you right now, you always, always, always want to try to have a player inside of Kitchen. So you are guaranteed the rotation to P1 and you're guaranteed these laundry spawns. The enemy, they will be spawning out Mansion and they will be spawning out Back Garage. And you can usually expect them to be hitting from Z or expect them from hitting from uh, Pull Steps. Now, I'll tell you right now, P5, it just gets hectic, and sometimes you're not often given a uh, setup opportunity, but this is ideally what you want. Sometimes, though, you're not giving kitchen, right? So instead, you might have to do a more wonky setup where it's more like this, um, where it's just on opposite sides. It's just number four now is at even more of a disadvantage because he can get wall banged through this wall. And that's why you want to be kitchen. You don't want to be Z. Just because you can wall bang this wall. 
All right, but I'm sure one thing we're very focused on is how the hell do we break this? And P5, again, it could be one of those money hills if an enemy team don't know how to break it. How do we break it? It's really simple. You have to pinch it from all four sides, and you just have to invest that time to do it. So you would have, um, let's say we had all four of the enemies spawn uh, mansion side. Very quickly, you'd want to have two players come over here. One player uh, plays kitchen, or sorry, two players are trying to play for this kill kitchen. Uh, boom, you win trades. Now you have one player, right? This guy just dies, this guy spawns in. So now you have a player inside kitchen, perfect. That guy who just spawned up, now he can sit pull steps. These two other players are rotating around the right side and doing the exact same thing. They're trying to kill this guy at raid. Boom, they trade him out. Boom, one there. This guy just spawned up. Now we have a guy pillars. And ideally, you ideally this guy should not spawn mansion. And instead, he'll spawn closer to his teammate over here. And now you guys have a four-man pinch where he just goes, fills in Z. And now you guys have a four-man pinch. And uh, I'll tell you right now, the idea is you're giving them a full 20 seconds just to break them and get only about 30 seconds left. Uh, that's why this game is a little bit hard. It's because if you rotate for P1, P2, P3, you're good to stay in the game. But the second the enemy holds P4, P5, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nail-biter. All right, well, um, we talked a lot about how to, you know, play it. We talked about the setups, the breaks, the rotations. Um, one thing we did not talk about, though, are the actual spawns. And uh, that'll be the last thing I'll leave you with. Um, I will upload this, so whenever you need to, you can just go right back and say, okay, cool. I remember how to do that again. Yeah. All right, so uh, for P1 spawns, um, let me just get all these guys out of here, and I'll just draw. All right, so for P1 spawns, it's uh, pretty basic. You have uh, this back spawn over here in case an enemy was like uh, pushed up right here, and you have an anchor. But if this enemy was dead, obviously you'd be spawning closer towards laundry. Not only that, but if someone's um, flanking around or in kitchen, you will be spawning laundry. And the enemy spawns, it's pretty much just back garage majority of the time. And that's literally it. Um, there's a few times where I've seen players, you know, effectively hard block and get pushed up where they're spawning the enemy more towards AC. But I rarely ever see this ever happen. And it's not going to happen unless you're on a pro team probably. But even then, the pros are really good. So that's the very, very basic P1 spawns. Um, pretty easy to get down. For P2 spawns, now for P2, um, we already said that ideally what's happening is if we have good spawns, we're all going to be spawning right here. And if the enemy has bad spawns, the enemy is going to be spawning either mansion or raid. I'll tell you right now, it's almost always raid where they're spawning, but if you do have a player pushed out towards pillars, then the enemy will be spawning over towards mansion. All right. Now for P3. P3 spawns um, are a little bit more uh, complicated because this right here, this AC spawn, Sometimes people could just spawn there. Like I told you, if you had all four of your teammates in hill right here by accident, the enemy team could literally spawn right there, which gets annoying, and that's why you usually just want to body in this area at all times. Um, but yeah, the normal spawns are pretty much, if we're playing super tight inside of uh, P3, then the enemies are going to be spawning a lot more closer towards raid. But if we're pushed out just a little bit more, and we're not pushed out crazy, we're just pushed out a little bit more, the enemy are just spawning a little bit further back. However, if we're pushing out for that rotation that we talked about, then the enemy is 100% spawning out there. 
and uh, vice versa. If you if you push pull, the enemy is still going to be spawning raid again. Um, it, it that's that should be a given. And uh, last but not least, if you decide to go for that break that I told you about, where you have one player mansion and the other three are hitting gym, the enemy will spawn out middle. Um, why the enemy spawns out middle instead of like pool or raid? I honestly can't tell you. I I honestly don't know. All right. Now for P4, um, P4, this is where I said you need to make sure you, when you break it, you stack the hill. You just stack it immediately because sometimes you will get two enemies who spawn up there and two enemies who spawn mansion. And these are the basic spawns. Obviously, if you have uh, everyone pushed out and you're fine, the good guy spawns uh, will be right here. There's one thing I didn't tell you, though, about P4, which is a little bit cool and a little bit exciting, is if you had a perfect setup where you had a player hard blocking, a player inside of time, a player inside of Tiki, and then you had your kitchen player, instead of him playing kitchen, if this guy wasn't playing kitchen and he was pushed up all the way into this corner right here, the enemy is now spawning right back here in this corner. And <laughs> it's this, oh my gosh, if you could somehow magically get into this corner spot and we're hard blocking, the enemy is spawning all the way out in toward garage and it's almost irrelevant for them to even try to hit P4. All right, cool. And now uh, bringing it down to P5. Again, you know, P5, usually there's a bunch of different spawns if we have a player inside of kitchen normally the kitchen spawns will be right here and if there's enemies fighting a uh, poolside then you're instead spawning laundry um if the enemies push up on both laundry or sorry yeah if the enemies push up on both laundry and pool yet you still have a teammate inside of kitchen then you would just spawn further back and the enemy spawns are pretty much going to be mansion. And if they're pushed up, they're usually spawning like gym over here. So again, this is where I said P5 just gets really hectic with all of these spawns. And, you know, sometimes even though if you have a player inside of kitchen, an enemy still will spawn over here laundry. Again, P5 is just all about just playing tight and making sure uh, you can trust your teammates and everything like that. All right, well, that was a breakdown for um, Raid Hardpoint, um, and we have about seven minutes left. Did you have any questions? Um, since I play a lot of league play, so basically I play solo. Sometimes okay. I play for dual. What should be my main focus? Because I know all this would probably be impossible to do. Right, so if you're a sub player, and here's two things you need to focus on as a sub player right now if you have a player hard blocking push up push up push up push up push up and just try to keep them um as back as possible such as if you just spawned up on p4 and you see you have, you have a teammate right here just try to get to this spot because you're gonna guarantee your team 40 seconds on time or sorry guarantee your team 60 seconds on time um again even if you needed to break p1 laundry and the enemy set up laundry, if you made that god play where you win that gunfight uh, kitchen, all you need to do now is play your life and just stare at your minimap and wait for your teammates to get kills. Once they start getting kills, then you can push. You just guarantee your team spawns for P1 and P2. Now you're soaking up P1 time and you can soak up P2 time. Again, if you need to lead P2 and you need to get to that rotation for P3, be the player to fly out of pool and try to flank them stairs. If it gets too hectic, make sure you're getting that rotation off to P3 to get that cut. Um, and doing that, you're going to more than likely, once again, guarantee your team some time on P3. P4, um, definitely that's where it gets harder. Um, like I said, if you guys spawn there, it's pretty easy. You just push out, you're done. Um, P4 is very hard to break. 
Um, and P5, very hard to break. That's where I would say, literally, that's where it's going to... You're going to need teammates' help, <laughs> is for P4, P5. Um, but yeah, always stare at your mini-map. How, how often do you actually look at your mini-map and your big map? I will say I look at it basically before I get to any fight, basically. Like, before I calculate my next move, I'll look at it and I'll see where people are dying at. Okay, perfect. So you're looking at it quite a bit then, right? Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, awesome. I like to use this analogy, and uh, it's pretty much you want to treat your minimap in Call of Duty exactly how you treat your mirrors and speedometer while driving on the freeway. What I mean by that, you're going, you know, 80 miles per hour down a freeway, and you're staying in your lane, not crashing in, into anybody, but at the exact same time, you're looking at your left mirror, top mirror, right mirror. You might change the radio, you know, you, and you're doing all that confidently. You know, you're not worried about it. You're going 80 miles per hour, not crashing to anybody, but you're still just nonchalantly, you know, probably going to talk to someone, you know, change the radio. Um, that's how you want to treat it in Call of Duty. You're going 80 miles per hour, and you're confident to always look at that minimap. And when you look at that minimap, that's what you need to look for is where your teams are on the map. Um... I'll tell you right now, one thing you should probably do is pull up like a pro VOD. I, I, wish, I, I wish I was doing this right now. Um, I just don't have enough time. Um, pull up a pro VOD and compare this video I just made right now to that pro VOD. And you're going to see those players in those exact same positions. And that's just a matter of you, you know, just constantly grinding that into your head of, all right, I have a player um back tree he's hard blocking i'm pushing up shoot we don't have a hard block my players are pushed up i need a hard block okay cool i need to get this rotation off devin told me to do this to get the rotation boom i got the rotation for my team so basically i'll be playing like the missing link yeah you're gonna be playing the missing link and uh, this is how you're gonna set yourself up to start winning a ton more league games based off of yourself um okay you know it, it gets it gets a little difficult as a coach because everyone has different goals everyone has different um aspirations right some players they want to be a professional and what i just told you today they're gonna love it and they're gonna be okay with it and they're gonna move on but you know maybe you don't want to be a professional and you just want to be really good at league play you know it's it I then have to teach you a different way on coaching on, hey, no, you need to do this, 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 this even though that's not how the pros play, right? And um, it gets really hectic, but hopefully it's a lot of good information. Um, I'm hoping that you at least learned a few new things today, and uh, you could take this out in the future whenever you hop onto Raid Hardpoint. Nah, I definitely will. I never knew about how the spawns went. Yeah, I just thought they they went like left and right the whole time. No, no, no. Um, here let me actually, I'm gonna show you one last thing that you should uh keep doing now. Uh, whenever you're looking at your mini map, so whenever you look at your mini map, um, try to create a uh four quadrants. This was <laughs> this is horrible, but you you get you get the idea, right? <laughs> four quadrants. Yeah. All right, yeah, cool. It. So I'll tell you right now, if you just spawned up laundry, and um, you know, let me let me get a good example. Ah, dang it! it it's hard because, um, like I said, every hard point has different spawns. Like for P1, no one will ever spawn on this top side pool side, ever. Um, so therefore, it's like irrelevant, right? You just need to know the spawn. But if you just start looking at your big map perpendicular, or sorry, if you just start looking at your big map uh, with these perpendicular lines, just thinking about it. Oh, I spawned up laundry. I see that I have teammates pushed up laundry. Um, I know that I have a teammate over here in this quadrant. Oh, there's an empty quadrant. That empty quadrant is usually where the enemy is spawning. And this is how pros memorize their spawns um, like immediately when the game comes out. Uh, is in the first two weeks of a new Call of Duty for their scrims, all they do is everyone throws on submachine guns and they just go head first and try to learn the pacings and learn the spawns. 
And when they're looking at their minimap, they're creating this uh, four quadrants because it's going to be very easy to see, oh, I got a teammate in this quadrant, teammate in this quadrant, teammate in that quadrant. Don't know where they are here, so they have to be somewhere there, right? Okay. Um, and if you just start looking at that, empty quadrant, enemies. Empty quadrant, enemies. You're going to start understanding, okay, that's where they are spawning. Um, and then, you know, the next step is to perfectly understand where they're spawning you know um you know for an example like p4 uh if we're playing p4 like you said um when we're set up for this spot over here where we have one player in hill one player on tree one player back steps and one player in kitchen watching the back push like you're you're totally okay to you know understand that you know you probably thought they're gonna spawn out here right yeah but, like I said, P4, it only has laundry and mansion spawns. Therefore, I knew they were spawning out here. But, you know, in the future, maybe you'll see a teammate over here. And this teammate over here, you'll understand, okay. Empty quadrant, top right, that's where they're spawning. Okay, okay. Yep, and uh, all you gotta do is just build a habit. You die, I spawn here, enemy spawns there. I die here, or sorry. I died, I spawned here, enemy spawns there. I spawn here, enemy spawns there. Every single death. And that's how you're going to be able to just, you know, memorize it a, a lot faster as well. It's just, I spawn here, enemy spawn there. It's really annoying, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm annoyed with myself just now saying it, but <laughs> that's that. Okay, I got you. I understand. Awesome. Well, um, like I said, I'll have this video uploaded uh, later on today. Other than that, uh, any last questions?